Well, we're bringing you this breaking news story just in. A major firefighting operation is underway at Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral. Now, smoke can be seen billowing out from the top of the building. Flames are bursting from its top two bell towers. At the moment, it's not known what has caused the fire. We were inside and then uh, they took everybody out and then where the fire starts. And you filmed, do you have some video? Uh, yeah, well, give me a second. Well, how, how did that make you feel? Were you scared? Yeah, very scared. Very, very. It's sad for these, these people. We came to visit from far away and uh, it's very sad. A lot of people cry. Thousands of people were there crying and this is part of the moment where the fire starts. I had the film, there's no, no fire and then you see all this. Now we have our very own correspondent Stéphane Debris at the site for us. He's in Paris for us now and uh, he's going to tell us everything he knows about the fire there at Notre Dame Cathedral. So uh, Stéphane, what can you tell us? Well, approximately an hour ago, uh, quarter to seven local time, a fire started at the spire in the middle of the Notre Dame. Uh, the spire is under uh, restoration works. Actually, just before this weekend, the statues decorating the spire were uh, lifted off. So um, we can see on the images as well that there are all kinds of um, works going on around the spire. So it's very likely that this fire is the cause of these restoration works. Of course, nothing is sure at this very moment. Um, the fire fire is now spreading uh, to the roof and of course firefighters from the entire Paris region are now uh, trying to save the almost one millennium old church. This is the moment, uh, the moment when the cathedral spire collapsed. This is the moment, this is the spire here. You can see it engulfed in flames. These are the pictures taken as this spire comes down. Let me bring you what uh, President Emmanuel Macron has tweeted, if I'm just having a quick look at this here. He's saying, well, Notre Dame is in flames. He's saying um, the, sort of a great sense of emotion across the whole nation, saying here as well, that he's thinking about the Catholics and all French people and, uh, you know, very, uh, yes, so watching these events tonight, wanting the nation to come together to think about, uh, you know, what this represents for France. Isabel. Our correspondent, Annelise Bourges, is at the scene. She's at the Pont Louis-Philippe, which is right by Notre Dame. Now, Annelise, uh, uh, I don't know if you can hear me now, but uh, if you can, w what are you hearing, what are you seeing uh, there right at the, right by the scene of the Notre Dame Cathedral, which is on fire? Well, Isabel, the streets of Paris uh, right now, at least the streets around Ile de la Cité where uh, the cathedral is located, are absolutely packed. There are thousands of people um, just watching, um, bewildered, in shock, um, the flames uh, going up, the thick smoke that has now covered parts of the sky of Paris. There are helicopters that are flying by at the church. 
Um, but around me, there are just thousands of residents and tourists alike, many people crying, um, expressing their pain in watching this monument, this uh, monument that is so important for the city for uh, in, in a religious aspect, but also just a, a monument that has become one of the symbols of Paris. What makes it particularly heartbreaking is this tweet from the official account of the Notre Dame Cathedral. It says, the sun rising over the works, the works they're referring to, you can see here, from the roof, which has now gone, these works here. You can see the, um, the poles, the scaffolding. This tweet was the view from what is now the center of that fire. The fire described by us, uh, to us by eyewitnesses as shooting through this building. There was a real sense that among the cathedral anyway, that these works heralded a great new chapter, a vital chapter. Here they are just uh, last week removing statues as part of these restoration works. Now, at this stage, it's important to say we do not know the cause of the fire. Earlier, we spoke to Benjamin Moutourna. He is an architect who specializes in historical buildings, and he was actually the chief architect of Notre Dame for some 13 years. And uh, he obviously knows this building inside out, and, and he told us what he thought uh, about where the fire had started. The fire, it seems to began in the spire. But after that, the spire fell down. And uh, the problem is uh, the load of the spire is very huge. And the vault, which is underneath, is not so strong. So I'm afraid if uh, the vault was strong enough to support the, f the spire or not. You have been here for quite a while. I spotted you yes. in the middle of the crowd. I was here like one hour, one, one hour ago. It's tragedy, total tragedy. Uh, the feeling, the common feeling that is all around is first disbelief. People cannot believe that this really happened. So people were crying and bursting into tears, some of them. And then at the same time, a lot of dignity. You see the crowd is not agitated now. There's a sense of solemnity. Uh, it's a common wound, at the same time there is the, the certitude, you know, that we will, certainty that we will reconstruct it. And for the moment, lack of information, we don't know if there were casualties, we don't know if some uh, artwork has been lost, of course some has been, but how much, to what Just extent, the extent of the damage. The extent of the damage. Bring you up this image here and this again showing you the powerful the rose window of notre dame dan here saying this is the first time i saw notre dame's famous rose window i was seven years old it is one of the most beautiful things i have ever seen and i visit the cathedral each time i was in paris just being moved by this astonishing window this building matters to people whether you're parisian whether you're french whether you're faith whether you're secular it is a building that speaks to people so when you see that those images now you see a desperate fight to salvage what we can, although of course we have seen the spire go, we have seen the roof go. This is a fight, if you like, for a piece of the soul of Europe. I don't think it's, I don't think it's an overestimation to say that that is how people are expressing their feelings about this story on social media. We've also been hearing from world leaders. We've heard from uh, Germany's Angela Merkel. She has said that she is deeply saddened by the events in Paris and so sorry to see these images of Notre Dame, a building which is so iconic and means so much to so many. 
And President Trump has also tweeted saying it's so horrible to watch the massive fire at Notre Dame Cathedral. He has suggested perhaps flying water tankers could be used to put it out. But as we have heard before, uh, the authorities are saying to do anything like that, to try and pour water onto such a delicate structure as the Cathedral of Notre Dame would perhaps cause more damage and perhaps cause the entire structure to, to collapse. So uh, the situation is very, very t intense, very emotional as well. J'habite ici, je suis vraiment une enfant de Paris. Pour moi, Notre-Dame, c'est Paris. Voilà. C'est des grandes fêtes. Je suis venue régulièrement ici. Pas seulement en tant que catholique, mais en tant que parisienne, européenne. Notre-Dame, c'est un symbole mondial pour moi. Napoleon, he was crowned uh, there on the 2nd of December 1804. The thorn crown of Jesus is in there. And uh, of course, Victor Hugo saved it because he wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame because at the coronation of Napoleon, that was the time when the city was thinking of demolishing it because they needed money to, from the French Revolution, there were lots of things going on, so they were thinking of demolishing the cathedral. But Victor Hugo, he wrote a story, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And with his story, he saved the cathedral because he said that if they would demolish it, there would be a curse of bad luck that would be unleashed, that would be under the cathedral. And with demolishing it, it would take over the Parisians and Paris. I, it's unbelievable. It's like they, America is only 200 years old to 50. Uh, this is three times older than the whole country of the United States. And uh, uh, it's just uh, it's so... Um, filled with uh, historic artifacts um, and has religious importance and cultural importance for everybody, uh, Catholics and, not in, 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 and everybody else. Uh, we, we're not even Catholics, but uh, for us it's just a big uh, shock and surprise and devastation. In the 90 minutes that are on now, that it would be the decision of the firemen and helping the cathedral if it will survive or not, so we don't know yet. So this is why I'm here. I thought if Cathedral Notre Dame doesn't survive, I just don't want it to be alone. So I'm just here for that, you know. At about 7 p.m. local time, that's about three and a half hours ago, some 400 firefighters battling that blaze inside and outside the cathedral. Inside the cathedral as, as firefighters try and salvage what artwork they can. There has been reports from within the French Interior Ministry the suggestion that firefighters may not be able to save this building. Perhaps they are preparing the public to accept that this fire will destroy, if not all, most of this building. But the efforts are ongoing. You can see from the pictures and people are praising the emergency services. We get a sense that this is fighting not just for a place of worship, not just for a, a tourist attraction, but for a piece of the story of Europe, the history and the identity of Europe. We can uh, bring you um, St. Paul's Cathedral, a tweet from St. Paul's Cathedral in London. If we're looking back into history, the original St. Paul's itself completely destroyed in a fire. There's a history, of course, buildings like this, prized buildings, are vulnerable to these kind of fires. But... In the modern world, this, this we are, you know, really have to look back to see something like this. But uh, St. Paul's Cathedral saying our thoughts and prayers with those affected by the devastating fire at Notre Dame uh, Cathedral, Paris, particularly in this time of Holy Week. For many people, this is the centre of their faith. And to see this building going up in flames, as you saw, it's driving people onto the streets to pray. show you an image that you are seeing going around 
And this goes to show the scale of the challenge. It's believed to it. It's drone pictures showing the fire tonight. This is Notre Dame Cathedral, and this is the fire burning at the heart of that cathedral. And when you think about the challenge anybody would face trying to bring a blaze like that under control in a building that is full of historic timbers, historic wooden beams, and you see that image, you get a sense of how powerful this fire is. The North Tower, we've seen one of the spires collapse. Of course, the roof, the roof is gone. The efforts are now to try and contain the fire within the walls of the cathedral. One woman has, has said that she felt as if she'd witnessed a, a murder uh, and, and some of those there at the scene have been asking why the cathedral wasn't better protected and questions about how this blaze could have spread so quickly in such a short time. Uh, there was a lot of scaffolding in the area where the fire broke out. The suspicion is that this could somehow have been started by the, the people taking part in the renovation work. We are hearing from uh, firefighters, they're now not sure that the cathedral can be saved. French President Emmanuel Macron is about to speak. Uh, let's listen in uh, to what's being said right now. C'est passé ce soir à Paris et dans cette cathédrale Notre-Dame est évidemment un terrible drame. Et je veux avant toute chose avoir une pensée et des remerciements pour les sapeurs-pompiers de Paris. Près de 500 d'entre eux depuis plusieurs heures se sont battus contre les flammes et se battent encore. Le pire a été évité même si la bataille n'est pas encore totalement gagnée. Les prochaines heures seront difficiles, mais grâce à leur courage, la façade et les deux tours principales ne se sont pas effondrées. Dès demain, une souscription nationale sera lancée, et bien au-delà de nos frontières. Nous ferons appel aux plus grands talents, et ils sont nombreux qui viendront y contribuer. Et nous rebâtirons. Nous rebâtirons Notre-Dame. Good morning, Europe. Thank you for starting your day with us. Uh, let's get you up to date with our top stories. The ancient spire and roof of the cathedral collapse as 850 years of history goes up in flames morning to Stefan. Give us an update of, of, of what that damage consists of, what is left of the cathedral. The entire roof which was built of oak wood, 800 years old, has gone, gone up in flames uh, in a couple of minutes actually. Uh, you see the scaffolding, it was already, the restoration of the cathedral had already started, so what you see here is the scaffolding where the spire once stood, uh, that one also fell down, but that was a, an addition of the 19th century, so that was not original uh, from the church, nevertheless uh, the spire is gone now, um, so the entire roof is gone. Damage can be observed from outside the cathedral, but of course inside Notre Dame there is also uh, another level to the destruction. Inside, the forest of wooden beams covering the stone vaults has all been destroyed. But 
many of the Catholic relics have been saved, including the holy crown of thorns and a nail said to be from the cross. Among the treasures whose fate is still unknown, some of the most celebrated stained glass windows in Europe. The most special, the South Rose window dating back to the 13th century. And a series of medieval wooden sculptures. It survived two world wars. It was to the sound of its bells that France's liberation was celebrated. Le Grand Orgue de Paris est sauvé. C'est une nouvelle magnifique pour les amoureux de cet instrument unique, à l'histoire pluricentenaire et classé monument historique à lui tout seul. Rosie et notre Cube team ont regardé quelques des artefacts artifacts inside. There has been some really good news. This is France's Minister of Culture, and he's got this photograph here of what was teams of people basically taking out valuable, precious artifacts out of Notre Dame to make them look after. He said they're gradually being made safe, uh, assisted by a huge team of people. En ce qui concerne les peintures, les grandes peintures, notamment les mets de Notre Dame, a priori, il n'y a pas de dommages liés à l'incendie, mais plus euh, éventuellement euh, des dommages liés aux fumées. Et donc nous allons les transporter en sécurité dans les réserves du Louvre où elles seront déshumidifiées et où elles seront protégées, conservées puis restaurées. Hier soir, on a mis à disposition euh, immédiatement, puisque nous sommes voisins, euh, la salle de Saint-Jean, qui est la grande salle où d'habitude on fait aussi des grandes expositions pour que puissent être protégés, gardés euh, ces, euh, ces tableaux et ces œuvres. Et puis, euh, bien sûr, euh, la couronne d'épines et euh, la tunique de Saint-Louis qui sont également euh, mmh. en lieu sûr. La semaine dernière, on y faisait ces travaux de dépose de ces apôtres euh, qui, qui, qui sont venus dans notre atelier donc jeudi dernier, et qui sont là bien sûr, et heureusement parce que finalement ils sont à l'abri, c'est un samedi terrible. Dans le contexte, on pourrait parler de miraculé, mais c'est vraiment un concours de circonstances, donc euh, je crois qu'on était là au bon moment, au bon endroit. On a dans la continuité des équipes avec toutes les entreprises des monuments historiques qui ont travaillé, qui travaillent qui viennent aider pour consolider, fixer, récupérer ce qui peut être récupéré pour qu'il y, qu y ait le maximum de pièces d'origine qui puissent être replacées. When you see the pictures, when you see the visuals, you get a real sense of why people were so moved. If you come with me in the cube, on unenews.com we have an interactive page which allows you to see the cathedral before and after the fire. So if I just step back here, you can see this is the cathedral, a photograph from Reuters. You can see this 19th century spire as well as the roof here. Now if I, just on our website here, we've juxtaposed that now with the images of the cathedral after the fire. You can see the spire is gone, the roof has collapsed, but okay. thankfully the two bell towers and the structure, crucially the stone, the stone structure around it, survived. So while of course that's a very uh, moving picture, it's driven a lot of people to want to donate money, it is of course people online grateful that not more was lost. But let's take you into the story then of people digging deep to try and save the cathedral. And one of the most interesting aspects was how many of the big names in French business have done just that. Let's just bring you up um, François-Henri Pinault. He is a, a French billionaire. He spoke exclusively to Euronews. After it emerged, he donated 100 million euros from his own pocket. This is what he had to say to us about why he did it. I was looking at that. I was feeling something inside me and And not just me, but I had young people around me that don't even know the importance of the cathedral in the French history. That was, they were crying. So it's really part of who we are as a, as as individual, but also as a as a nation. So I felt so responsible for for that and to make sure that because I have some resources, there was no option but to help. As simple as that. That was what François-Henri Pinault had to say, but he was by no means the only French big businessman. 200 million pledged by Bernard Arnault here and his group. We know that the L'Oréal group also pledged. Total, the French company, pledging again. And then we've got uh, Martin Boigo and his brother pledging 10 million. Of course, these two behind the, the telecoms giant. Big names digging deep with big money, meaning that in less than 24 hours, that total raised... Well, it was over 750 million euros. The unquestioned heroes of Monday night were the hundreds of firefighters who battled the blaze for hours as it tore through Notre Dame. Euronews correspondent Effie Kutsakosta has been hearing just what it took to win that fight. The strategy of General Gallet, responsible of the Brigade of Sapeurs-Pompiers de Paris and of his men, 
a été de faire un, un, un compartiment, ce qu'on appelle la part du feu, en laissant euh, une partie euh, de, de, de l'œuvre la, de la, de euh, brûler, malheureusement, mais en conservant les deux beffrois avec euh, les cloches et le reste de la structure euh, pour euh, essayer de préserver un maximum d'œuvres et un maximum pour pouvoir reconstruire derrière. Nous sommes sur une deuxième phase, une phase d'analyse. L'analyse bâtimentaire est faite par des architectes qui ont l'habitude de, de, de découvrir les, les failles et les difficultés dans le bâtiment. Et puis, euh, nous essayons de consolider un maximum le, le bâtiment pour pouvoir euh, renaître demain euh, avec une construction nouvelle. But we are now going to go straight to the Elysee Paris, uh, where French President Emmanuel Macron is making an address following that inferno at Notre Dame Cathedral. Let's listen in. Chacun a donné ce qu'il avait. Des pompiers ont combattu au péril de leur vie avec héroïsme. Les policiers, les soignants étaient là comme à chaque fois. Les Parisiens se sont réconfortés. Les Français ont tremblé, émus. Les étrangers ont pleuré, les journalistes ont écrit, les écrivains ont rêvé, les photographes ont montré au monde ces images terribles. Des riches comme des moins riches ont donné de l'argent au fond. Chacun a donné ce qu'il a pu. Nous sommes ce peuple de bâtisseurs. Nous avons tant à reconstruire. Alors oui, nous rebâtirons la cathédrale Notre-Dame plus belle encore. Et je veux que cela soit achevé. D'ici cinq années, nous le pouvons.